Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in today. You are listening to Society Bites Radio. My name is Jillian Beth, and I am an intuitive healer and coach on a mission to empower women by reconnecting them to their inner wisdom. And I am grateful to have you all here with me today because we have a very special, amazing guest back, Miss Barisha. And if you missed last week's show with her, definitely go check it out. We had an awesome conversation about passion, art, creative power, and the beautiful mission that she is doing. And once again, we have her back to talk about some business advice and just her journey as a woman in business growing and and all the good stuff that we like to get into. So a little bit about her in case you missed it last week. She is an artist, an author, and an advocate for creative for creativity and women. She owns Pebble in the Pond Art Studio in San Diego, California, and is the author of The Spiral of Creativity, Mastering the Art of a Spirited Life. She also founded the International Women's Festival Northwest to honor women's accomplishments and highlight issues facing women globally. And the Pebble Rebel Award. That's a little bit of a tongue twister. Pebble Rebel Award, which honors women making a positive difference in their communities. She serves as the Southern California representative for the Global Art Project for Peace, and she is the founder of the Women's Woven Voices Project, an international art collaboration that empowers women through writing, weaving, and sharing their stories. So thank you for coming back, Miss Brisha. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. Absolutely. I'm really glad to have you um, back on this week's show because I love just interviewing different women who have started businesses. Uh, Business, in my personal opinion, is one of probably the hardest things I've done in my life is growing a business because it's stretched me in so many ways. I would not be talking on this radio show today if it weren't for starting my business and how it all unraveled. So I like hearing different women's stories and kind of what they've gone through and advice and I'll stop talking now because we're going to get over to you, but I mainly want to just say I I really appreciate you coming back this week to talk about it. Oh, I'm, I'm delighted. Yeah. So I know on last week's show, we definitely got into one of your, I'll call it a passion project. It's actually a really big honorable mission that you're doing. Um, But I'm wondering if you could just tell the listeners a little bit about what got you even interested in doing this business. Yeah. So I, um, I, I, as an artist, uh, I was just thinking about, you know, the biz, my business and the, how that, what that looks like. And, and like you, uh, you know, it's really stretched me and pushed me in many different directions. And in, in some people's minds, the, uh, the, the phrase art business is almost like an oxymoron, right? Yeah. <laughs> people who are creative and artistic Um, It's kind of like they're operating from, you know, one side of the brain and business requires the other side of the brain. And so uh, uh, it does sometimes sometimes it just seems like it doesn't really uh, fit. And and it actually is one of the things that I've incorporated in my business is really helping other artists because um, because truly some people who are really working on the right side of their brain uh, need help with yeah. organizing the organization and the structure and the bookkeeping and the things that are involved in a business, right? Mm-hmm. So it's such a whole person journey. <laughs> and for me, the same, uh, you know, the same thing. So uh, I found that using my passions kind of as an, an umbrella, uh, I could create a variety of different income sources to create a, a vibrant business uh, that really sort of fed all the, all the parts of my soul uh, and then just had to get help with organizing all of those yeah. things. Yeah. So, you know, I had my studio art business. Uh, so um, producing and selling art is a, a whole, you know, uh, part of what I did. 
did and do, excuse me, Mm -hmm. uh, writing my book and then marketing and speaking and sharing and teaching out of my book. Another component, uh, coaching other people uh, how to do their Uh, create their creative goals in their life, another component, Uh, and then teaching art workshops, another component. So uh, I don't think it's completely unusual that people find different ways to uh, offer what it is that they have within their business, but particularly for creative people. Yes. It's, it's, (laughs) yeah, for for creative people, uh, it's interesting, you know, if you speak to an artist, I mean, the word product or product line or, you know, they, they're almost um, insulted by the idea that their art is a product. But if you don't think of your art as a product, then uh, you're most likely not going to succeed uh, creating a, a business around your art. Yeah. Mm, so well said. And I, I, I'm glad that you brought up, uh, I think you use a phrase, whole person. Uh-huh. And much, much like masculine <clears throat> and feminine and right and left brain, like we, we all have both. We all right. have masculine energy, feminine energy. We all have a right and left brain. Right. There's some anomaly out there that I'm not aware of, which very well could be. But we tend to operate more from one side or the other. So the thing to understand, and, and I'm sure you know this very well, and what I've learned through working with a lot of different people and studying is even though we lean towards one side or the other, and yes, the creative side is not as, you know, the right side is not as good as handling all the structure and the organizational part of the left side of the brain, regardless of whatever side you tend to be on more often, it's about collaborating with others and, you know, asking for help and enlisting the individuals who help you with the parts that you're not as familiar with. That's why I think one of the most successful business people I knew always said, the reason I'm so successful is because basically I stay in my own lane of genius and I hire the people in the other areas to help me with the things that I'm not good at. I could not have said it better or agree with you more. Absolutely. So, um, you know, I, I just to confirm what you said, you know, collaborating with people who have, you know, the complementary skills is such a smart way to go. And uh, I, you know, I seems that uh, it could be, you know, it could have been just me, but in my experience, a lot of women who are beginning businesses seem to have that hub of the wheel, not even the hub of the wheel, but sort of like have to do it all myself kind of, uh, feeling that I'm not sure where that comes from. Uh, they're, you know, they certainly want to collaborate with others, but they still sort of feel like in order to, I don't know, to measure up, you know, they have to do everything. Yeah. And that's just a myth that has to be uh, busted. <laughs> so we have to bust that. So myth. true. Uh, it's so true. And it has to have been ingrained in us somewhere. And I don't know if it's yeah. because women just, you know, generationally were always the caretakers and doing all the different aspects and things at home. So maybe that plays into it. I don't know, but I I absolutely agree with you. And we have to smash that on its head. It will hold you back in so many ways if you do not allow other individuals to help. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it kind of makes me kind of makes me think in in terms of uh, you know like marriage. If, if one partner thinks that the other person is supposed to fulfill every yeah. one of their needs, this is a, a recipe for disaster. And so, yes. uh, you use the words you know you're staying in your genius lane. You know you uh, you know honoring your brilliance. Yeah. Uh, you know all of those different terms for saying do what you are really good at. And to just bring it back to art businesses and creative businesses uh, where somebody um, does something that is extremely creative uh, and then finds themselves administrating a business and now they're pulled away from what it is that they are brilliant at and Mm -hmm. put into the situation where uh, they are dealing with all of the things that suck their soul. Yes. 
uh, that I've seen that happen so many times. And so I think what we're, we're bringing to light in the conversation that we're having is just really important for people to hear. And there's many, many ways to find those collaborators, you know, networking groups, uh, um, within your, you know, within your community, uh, there's usually no lack of, uh, opportunities for you to connect with other people who, you know, do bookkeeping or who do yes. organization or, you know, do things. And so, uh, uh, if you feel like you're alone, you, you know, all you need to do is you really step out the door, open the door wide and start looking for people who have the skills that will really complement what you do. Absolutely. And for the, I know there's somebody out there listening right now who's like, I live in a small city. There's not much that's going on here. Or I don't know that I can find those people here. Do not let that be your excuse for not doing something because some of the most amazing women and people that I've collaborated with in my life have come through different programs I've been involved with, whether it's coaching programs or, um, you know, different certificates or schools I've gone to online, like the, the World Wide Web. If Absolutely. you're listening to this right now, if you can hear our voices talking, you most likely have access to, you know, that World Wide Web. And there are people in so many places that are basically waiting to collaborate with you. So not an excuse. Yeah. Well, when I was growing up, the term virtual assistant would have meant anything to me. And now, yeah. <laughs> and now, um, and now everything. I just, you, you know, people can help you remotely with everything. They can, you know, they can do your books, they can do your social media, they can do your marketing, they can do your branding. Uh, it's, it really is a, an amazing world we live in. So, uh, uh, again, you know, you have to call on your creative courage sometimes yeah. to reach into the unknown, uh, you know, to, and also to have faith in yourself to bring someone in to collaborate with you on your, on your business in that way, you know? Absolutely. Oh, Cause that could be scary. <laughs> it, it, it definitely can be. And it was for me in many different instances, um, joining different programs, but you know, I've said it before, I'll say it a million times again, the best investment you can do is the one in yourself because it affects every single other area of your life. So oh, invest in yourself, buy a book, join a program, get a coach, like get out there, talk to people, do something because it, I mean, there's just, there really is no excuse quite honestly. And that other person is literally probably waiting for you. And if you're collaborating together, it's going to be mutually beneficial, which I think Sometimes people don't take into consideration because if, if you're anything like me or how I used to be, it was, I don't want to bother anybody. I don't want to ask them for this. But then I would find out as I started to stretch and get uncomfortable, that courage, right? It's that, oh my gosh, yes. And then they get excited and then they're able to do the thing that they love and it helps. It's, it's mutually beneficial. I don't, I don't know any other way to put it. I agree with you completely. Uh, and I would just add into all of the wonderful things and resources that you just listed um, is finding a mentor. Uh, yeah. There are people, as you just said, there are people who are out there who have gone down the trail, if not, you know, I, your unique path, the general, <laughs> the general trail, they have gone down and have things that they would love to offer you. And, um, Again, like you said, you just have to be brave, courageous to, uh, if you see somebody who's doing something right, you know, invite them to lunch, you know, ask them if you can give them a ride to the airport, right? yeah. <laughs> just basically ask them, can I just ask you through, you know, a couple of questions you are, you know, you are successful and I want to be successful. What, you know, what can you advise me? Yeah. Uh, I think that's totally. 